Hello there everybody and welcome back to Anecologist Plays, the channel where we are learning more about nature by playing games. We are back in Ark Survival Evolved and we are looking at the strangest creatures ever to exist on this earth and here is the first one. This is Megatherium, the giant ground sloth, also just sometimes called the Megather. Mega meaning great or massive and Therium is beast and this creature is a very very strange one indeed. Now the first thing is that obviously you'll notice it is massive in size. It was round about the size of an elephant or at least the weight of an elephant. Could have been six meters from tail to snout and weighed up to about four tons and they lived relatively recently from about five million years ago up until only 10,000 years ago with some estimates going down to about 8,000 years ago so they are, were very very recent and like with many of the other creatures we have encountered thus far it is quite possible that they went extinct due to the kind of double whammy with climate change resulting in the change in the habitats and then also hunting by humans and there is at least one uh, skeleton of the giant ground sloth that does bear butchering marks where humans either killed and butchered it or simply scavenged it and butchered the animal. Now to have brought down a giant ground sloth would not have been easy. They had, and we can't really see it in the game here, but in the front of their, of their chest they had small little bones, ossicles, embedded in their skin, giving them kind of a chain mail. Now I love the fact that as this guy is walking around, he is walking on four legs, they were quadrupedal, and you can see there, they were what we call knuckle walkers. They had these 15 centimeter long claws, which are massive, but you don't want those sharp claws blunting. And like one of its closest living relatives, the giant anteater, these guys are walking with, or would have walked, with their knuckles curled in. So their claws were actually not touching the ground. Instead, their claws, and if we go up here, there you can see, uh, and he of course is, there we go, knuckle walking so not walking directly on their claws instead curling their claws in to keep it protected and keep it safe uh, that's the first thing i love about the fact that these guys are walking around like that the second thing is that whenever he sits up so he's walking quadrupedally but he could sit down on his hind legs there we go and use its tail its thick muscular tail as a tripod so to give it stability and they would have done this while they were browsing because they were plant eaters like the fairies in the saurus they were herbivorous they would have fed on plant material and to do that they would have used their claws to actually bring the plant material a little bit closer to their most likely prehensile lips very similar to giraffes they would have had prehensile lips that would have allowed them to actually get to the plant material. Now, one thing that I do find very, very strange, and we are just going to sit up here, out of reach, more or less, of those dire wolves that are coming closer. But with the giant ground sloth, it is not sure whether they actually had hair like this at all, or whether they were like a massive, giant, hairless creature. Because most depictions of it actually have them with these big shaggy coats, similar to what we have here. But a creature of this size could very easily have overheated. Because fur, as we are here in the Arctic region, fur helps you to keep warm. It traps heat. But if you are a massive creature, then fur can be a major disadvantage and actually result in you overheating. And we are just going to not be killed by the wolves by going up into the air here. <laughs> As I was saying, fur could actually result in you overheating. And that is, if you're looking at things like elephants, for example, or rhinos, or hippos, or many of your large uh, animals. If you are large in size, you have a very large volume in your body, which is where all the cells are that will be generating heat, and you don't have as large a surface area to actually lose heat from. So large animals, are really at risk of overheating and I'll link a video by Kurt Gesagt down in the description as well. It's really one of the most amazing videos that explains it. Uh, how size affects the metabolic rate and overall overheating and things like that as well. And there is a real push nowadays it seems that for people to accept that these megatheria, these large 
giant ground sloths were most likely hairless, which I do find very strange, but that is most likely how they would have been. Now I don't know about you, but I think if said the sloth, which wasn't a giant ground sloth, but it was a typical ground sloth, if said the sloth in Ice Age were naked, it would have been a little bit of a different movie. Uh, if you think about it that way. Anyway, let's just carry on here and see what we can find still. Now, the second creature which we do have, and it's actually the one that we are also riding on, is most likely the largest raptor ever to have lived on Earth, the Argentavis. Now, these guys are from South America, or were from South America, also relatively recently, after the time of the dinosaurs, and we can see an ichthyosaurus swimming there in the background as well. But Argentavis, massive, massive wingspan, such a massive wingspan that some people believe that they would not actually have been able to fly. But the reason some people believe they could not have flown is because, first of all, they would have been extremely heavy. And secondly, if they were on the ground like that one over there, and they tried to push themselves off the ground, their wings would have clipped into the ground, which would have made, made it very difficult for them to actually take off. But there are two theories as to how they could have taken off. The first is, well, three actually. The first is that they would have jumped a bit into the air and then pushed off, but that is not most that's not very likely. That's not the most likely explanation. The second one is that they would have always made sure that they perch on rock faces, which also is not necessarily possible because sometimes you will be perched on the ground and then walk kilometers to just try and get to a spot where there is a rock face to jump off from. That's not necessarily viable either. The third explanation, which is most likely how they got off the ground, was that they were found in grassland environments in South America, where especially in the mountain grasslands, there is a lot of wind. And if the wind is blowing from the front here, you can very easily take off by just opening up your wings and angling it in such a way that the wind actually just pushes you up into the air. And that is how a lot of large birds like albatrosses are able to take off because albatrosses have wingspans up to three meters. And that's quite large. Some birds like your marabou stork, which also has a very large wingspan, they are able to just run a little bit and then take off, but that's because they have got very long legs and they can easily just take off their wings and clip into the ground. Unfortunately, this Argentavis over here is being taken out by a variety of creatures, mostly by the dire wolves down below, which are also attacking the Ankylosaurus. Right, so let's talk about, oh my word, a whole bunch of things attacking everything down there. So let's look at the hyper carnivorous creatures running around over there, the dire wolves. Originally believed to have been in the same genus as you, the normal grey wolf nowadays, the Canis genus, which is the same that dogs are in, they are in fact in a different genus altogether. Nowadays placed in Anosion. So, the dire wolf here was what we call a hyper carnivore, specializing in taking down massive prey. And that's because they had teeth that enabled them to actually cut into the flesh of larger prey, especially large prey that were struggling while they were being chased and being bitten by these massive creatures. Now, they were about the size of the Yukon wolf nowadays, which is the largest uh, wolves around still, so largest grey wolves around still, and about that size. Most likely also would have occurred in packs like grey wolves do, and they were very, very abundant in certain areas and they were probably the top predators the top dogs in certain areas they most likely did compete with the modern gray wolf as well as with smilodon the saber-toothed cat especially in places like the Lebre tar pits where all these creatures are or had been trapped in the past as well now like with many other creatures their extinction was probably caused by the change in climate and as a result the change in the prey base so not directly affected by the change in climate nor by the change in vegetation associated with that change in climate at the end of the last glacial maximum but more indirectly caused by the change in climate because as the climate changed the mega herbivores that these guys were dependent on the horses the camels the mastodons the mammoths even the ground sloths, not giant ground sloths, Megatherium, but different ground sloths that occurred in North America at the time, as, though, as the vegetation changed, those creatures went extinct. And whenever you have the prey animals disappearing, you can be sure that the carnivores are soon to follow. 
and that is most likely what happened a change in the climate resulting in a change in the animals in in the herbivores present and then as a result a change in the carnivores with the uh, carnivores no longer being supported in the area where they used to occur so unfortunately they went extinct most likely as a result of that also quite possible that the mammoths and other creatures, as I've mentioned before, went extinct as a result of hunting by humans. And then that kind of just led to their disappearance and then there was a trophic cascade. So a whole bunch of creatures in other trophic levels disappearing. So here of course we do have mammoths and they are obviously quite large. They're a little bit larger I believe than the African elephants that we have alive nowadays. And you can see they are covered by a shaggy coat. And you may be wondering, well, you just did say earlier that the Megatherium, the giant ground sloth, most likely did not have a shaggy coat because they would have overheaten. Why on earth do these guys then have a shaggy coat? The answer is that they, unlike the giant ground sloth, were living in a very, very cold area where the shaggy coat was crucial. That along with their tiny, tiny little ears that you can see kind of just flopping along the side of the head there, that was incredibly important for keeping them alive in the extremely cold areas where they occur. African elephants that are alive today have got much larger ears and are hairless because they are massive in size and for them overheating is more of a problem. Living in African savannas they really need to keep cool somehow and to do that they of course have no hair so that they don't trap ex excess heat and they have large flat ears which allow them to keep cool and lose a lot of heat increasing the surface area basically from which they can lose heat and here unfortunately a mammoth being taken down by deodons now deodons as i've mentioned previously oh and apparently i am starving so i'm just i just ate something that's because it is extremely cold and we are using a lot of energy just to keep warm that is the thing with colder areas if you are trying to maintain your body temperature cold and very hot areas uh, creatures usually need uh, to spend a lot of their energy on trying to keep cool or trying to keep warm in our case trying to stay warm and we burning through the calories now, as i've mentioned previously deodon would not have been found in the cold region like we are here they would have been more temperate or tropical areas uh, so they would not have occurred in the icy environments. Nonetheless, we apparently have them here. We also have a scorpion running around here, which really is not, uh, would have been, not have been present in this cold, cold region. Being ectothermic or cold-blooded, they simply would not have survived in the icy world over here. We also do have dire wolves over there, but something I am, uh, okay, so dire wolves are trying to attack us. They are going to die as a result. But a creature that I am very excited about, right over here, one of the largest penguins to have ever existed, the Kairuku. And they really were amazing penguins, these. Much larger than modern day penguins, where the largest described species being about one and a half times the weight of modern day emperor penguins, which are the largest living penguin species. And they were found in New Zealand and the name Kairuku means to dive for food because like penguins nowadays do they obviously dove uh, to catch their food and they would have fed on fish and squid anything like that that they could have found really quite a beautiful creature oh man I love these little guys and they would have been about 4.3 feet in height so about 1.5 to 1 point uh, almost 1.5 meters in height which is quite amazing and they would have occurred we're just going to sit down again and they would have occurred as i've mentioned in new zealand and they would have been found on little oceanic islands that were present there much of the area was actually ocean at that point in time and the little islands most likely provided safe refuges for them to live in and for them to also breed in because islands very often are safe spots for oceanic birds and nowadays with Marion Island and St. Edward Islands and a whole bunch of islands the lot of seabirds albatrosses and so are found on those islands and unfortunately they are under threat due to the introduction of things like mice onto the islands and there is a 
program, an uh, eradication program that is trying to get off the ground and hopefully by 2025 they will be able to get Marion Island mouse free, which really would be necessary for the continued survival of the albatrosses and the other seabirds on those islands. So Kairuku, the ancient penguin, would have occurred on the oceanic islands and that's because that would have been perfect breeding grounds for them. Uh, we are just going to fly a little bit further away. There is again a Utyrannus, which is a little bit more to that side. I did talk about them previously, so we're just going to keep on flying on uh, so that we reach a safer spot. Not sure whether there is even such a thing in this world, but anyway, we are just going to fly a little bit on and hopefully we'll be able to just land up ahead. Oh, there's another Utyrannus. Uh, of course, a whole bunch of little penguins there as well, Kairukus. Big ones, small ones, there's a little youngish one over there as well. Really uh, in much danger due to the diodons and the direwolves and everything trying to kill them. And that is why they would have occurred on islands. Uh, safer spots than well, these areas are. We are going to follow a similar process or similar thing. And we are just going to chill right over here on this ice flow where we are relatively safe, I believe. And that is then also where we are going to call it today, everybody. So thank you for joining me on our little adventure. We talked a little bit about traffic cascades and what happens if the megafauna of an area disappears. Of course, then the carnivores depend on those animals also disappear. And of course, we met the Kairuku. And next time we will be continuing on. Let's see, we are currently right over there. So we're finally making it around the bend. We should be heading to warmer areas again soon. And then we'll get some warmer clothes and hopefully go to the summit right over there in that general direction. More to the summit in the center of the island and see what we can find there. So if you enjoyed the video, please help out the psychologist by just giving the video a like. Comment down below what you enjoyed, what you would like to learn more about. If you've got any questions about any of the animals we encountered, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm, the fickle beast that we are trying to satisfy. So until next time, everybody, stay safe. We will see you all soon. Bye.